There's a lot of things that are fairly unintuitive about the modern internet, namely the fact that when you and I were growing up, we were told you don't meet strangers from the internet. You don't tell strangers your location, your name, your sex, anything. You don't tell them those things because those are things that they could use against you. You don't post images with identi <coughs> identifying, sorry, I just ate butter curry or whatever this orange shit is called and it's really spicy. I had a cold or a flu and I had it two days in a row, almost completely unable to taste the spice, now with the exact same amount. It's like killing me. I don't know how it didn't work like this before, but I lost my sense of smell and taste. Anyhow, there's a lot of things that are unintuitive about how the internet works today. Because at that time, none of the pictures we would post were meant to have identifying information. Nothing about ourselves was to be revealed. We were meant to very much distrust the other people on the internet because you never knew what they could be up to, what they were thinking, what they were planning to do, or whom they were doing it with. And this mindset about other people on the internet has been turned on its head because we live in an age where in order to get somewhere, if you don't have a car, you open an app that brings a stranger directly to you. A stranger that knows your name, your location, your sex. And that runs counter to everything we thought about the internet before. And yet, the internet in this way is intertwined with our real life in a way that it never has been before. And so I think for the kids that are growing up online now, they're seeing it as if it's just real life, that the internet is just real life. And this creates a situation where a lot of the etiquette that we learned when I was growing up doesn't apply to these people. And I think it's partially because us adults have stopped following that etiquette. Everybody knows what my real name is. So it's not like I've done a very good job at consistently following the rules. But the point still stands. Now, the way that we engage with the internet has changed. And so for the people who are growing up in that climate, a different climate with the internet, these rules are foreign to them. And so what happens? They get online, and they're easier to take advantage of than ever. Much, much easier to take advantage of than you or I, who grew up with a different set of rules. And this is very dangerous. And moreover, our relationship to devices has also changed. If you go to any big public space in North America, what do you see? It's a lot of children, including infants, on smartphones, tablets, and other devices of a similar sort. When a baby starts crying, what does the parent do? They hand them a smart device. And this is indicative of, I think, a broader problem that we're starting to see become more prominent in Gen Alpha that was already big enough with Gen Z which is heightened anxiety. Because if you think about it, what does putting the device in the hands of that child immediately do when they're having that problem? It teaches them to not address their problems, but to instead run away from their problems into an escapist fantasy in the form of their device. And so at the fundamental level, our relationship to these devices is also changing. Whereas parents in the past used to limit time on things like video games and the computer with the expressed understanding that too much screen time was probably bad for the brain, that has been turned on its head. Now, 
screen time increased is encouraged because the parents themselves are hooked on these devices. They're using them all the time to ignore their problems, most likely. And they just want the kid to shut up, so they put the device in the kid's hand. And this is putting them on the track developmentally to ignore every single problem that they have to run away from it instead of accepting it and addressing it head on. And that's a huge problem. So I've sort of given the game away on this. I've sort of heavily implied that our habits online and the way that we engage with this stuff, at least in regards to our own children, has changed drastically for the worst. But how exactly do you change societal-wide behavior like that? At this point, I think it's a little thing called legislation. I recently read a terrifying, hallowing article about a satanic cult that was operating over Discord that had convinced underage folks to carve things like the names of their abusers into themselves and kill family pets on livestream for points in the community that they were in, all at the behest of these ringleaders that were threatening to release information about them if they did not obey the will of said people. Very, very disturbing stuff to read. And it made me think about the Kids Online Safety Act, a bill that is being widely debated online and in the pub public sphere more broadly. A lot of people are against it who use the internet because they do not like the idea of having to have an ID tied to their online identity. And in general, this is a thing that I had agreed with throughout time. However, sometime about a year ago, I started to feel the opposite way. I started to see the effects that social media was having on a lot of these people and feeling more apprehensive about the issue. And it's weird because I am someone who I think could be the poster child for having grown up on the internet and then it leading to positive outcomes. I think my wife is the same way. Both of us benefited greatly from being online and using that as a source of refuge from the bad situations that we were in respectively. However, just because there are good outcomes with these people growing up online, it doesn't mean that that's the case for the majority. And so I would look at my story and then think I got lucky, but then also think that we got to do something to preserve the mental health of the majority of people. And for that reason, I think having these restrictions in place is necessary because it would prevent those kids from logging on and then not being able to be traced, from logging on and not having their abusers traced if events that are similar to the ones that I just described had transpired. There would be mechanisms in place that sure might be akin to mass surveillance, but would nonetheless ensure that people are held to account and that people are kept safe. Does it really matter that it would greatly enlarge the size of the state and potentially lead to other externalities such as uh, a warrantless spying and so on? It's like, we already have warrantless spying. It's not doing anything for us. It's not helping anything. I find it really hard to care. I used to care a lot. Now, I had videos talking about 
how beautiful I thought the, the Fourth Amendment was and all these different liberties. And nowadays I find it very hard to care because I am not a criminal. I don't do anything wrong. If there are people that want to break the law to blow the whistle on extrajudicial killings or other war crimes, they have a separate internet where they can do that. It's called the Tor Network. And I don't think a lot of these kids that are getting themselves into trouble over the surface web are smart enough to get on the dark web. And so it's not like there, there wouldn't be a mechanism for more anonymous communication or the filtration of information uh, uh, that is more risky to the authorities. But more than anything, I have a kind of, dare I say, accelerationist interest in this kind of law passing. Because if this kind of law passed, I just wouldn't use most of the internet anymore. Not because I don't have anything to hide. I don't have anything to hide. But... Because I think it's kind of weird that amount of information being looked at and, and read and potentially subject to prying eyes, random people from the government that, like, don't have any right to look through all of that. It's just kind of weird, the idea of imagining somebody else looking through so many personal aspects of your life. Something about that is inherently uncomfortable. And so, if we were to develop that kind of system, I would be off of just about every social media and messaging platform in existence. I wouldn't be on any of it, which is a great thing, because I hate being on those things. The only thing that I would retain is YouTube. I would just be on YouTube. And that would be all well and good, because I don't post anything publicly that I don't want to be seen publicly, you know? But, with all that other stuff that's meant to be private, I feel kind of weird about it. But I also don't need those platforms in my life. I haven't wanted those platforms in my life for a while. I've just sort of begrudgingly stuck with them out of habit. and. There have been plenty of times when I've barely used any of them. You know, before I met my wife, I barely went on Discord, and that had been the case for, like, a couple years. I've not used the internet anywhere near to the extent that most of the people watching this channel do, or most of the people I talk to do, you know, for the last couple years. Um, I prefer, even if I'm not doing things IRL, if I'm just doing things in my room, I prefer to do them by myself, not over the internet. And so what would I lose exactly if I were off all those social media platforms? I would be away from the platforms that I constantly complain about. I constantly complain about being on Discord, being on Twitter, etc., all of a sudden, I wouldn't have to be in those places. And so, it benefits me in kind of a weird, roundabout way that you wouldn't necessarily suppose. And that isn't one of the main reasons I support this kind of legislation, but I think it's a amusing side effect of it. What do you think about my arguments, babe? Are they far-fetched? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's so cringe. You're on, the, you're on the side of the NSA. You just want everyone to be monitored. You don't care about anybody else's online experience because you don't want to be online, so you, you want to throw the baby out with the bathwater and just, you know, F everyone. <laughs>
I think the people, the people's online experience I care about are the children who are getting consistently mm. abused and taken advantage of online. Maybe those children's parents should better monitor their online activity <laughs> rather than just letting them run roughshod and like go on, get go into these sort of places to begin with completely unmonitored. Most of these child apps, including like the popular ones like Discord have parental monitoring tools that can be enabled and used by the parents so that the parents can see who their children are interacting with. I think it's not necessarily untrue, the things that you're saying. Like, yes, obviously parents should be better parents. They should watch what their kids are doing. But they're also not going to do that. <laughs> like, <laughs> the, the point that I made in that vlog had a lot more to do with outcomes uh with with what i thought would would lead to the most people being in a better situation because the way i see it is like a whole lot of them are in a bad situation right now mm -hmm. and in my opinion it's the job of a good government to try and maximize the overall health of the population and so if parents are, are failing to be responsible to maximize the health of their own children the government should step in that's oh, i dropped it uh, <laughs> i dropped it yeah well they might have gotten an interesting angle uh, oh no yeah um, i mean you you make a you make a fair point um, I, I think that definitely if the, the measures were to be implemented successfully and there, there was no abuse of the system or ways to game the system or ways to trick the system, then it would in fact reduce online criminology. Mm -hmm. However, I think that, that the internet has um, shown us time and time again that people will find a way around these sort of systems. They'll find ways to hack accounts. They'll find ways to use an anonymous IP address. They'll find ways to, you know, defraud people's identities and, and, you know, end up anonymizing themselves anyways. At which point the people who are doing wrong are going to be de-anonymized and the people who are trying to do the right thing and just be on the straight and narrow path will be punished by, by being forced to give their ID even though they're doing nothing wrong. I think that's an interesting point of view I well there's a few reasons why I disagree that things would end up that way. Number 1, I think the that the kids who are most likely to get abused are too stupid <laughs> to use things like a VPN or or Tor or uh even like an alternative protocol like Gemini or I2P. I don't think they're smart enough to access those things because if they were smart enough to do all that they wouldn't be getting groomed in the first place. I mean, it's kind of a harsh thing to say, but like, I was a kid online at one point. Uh, that did not happen to me. Um, I feel very bad for the people that that's happening to, but it's kind of like, you should have known better. <laughs> like, if, if you're just at that level, then I, I just, I don't know what to say. So my assumption is that that is very unlikely to happen that the kids that are smart enough to actually access that technology are also going to be smart enough to not get manipulated in that way also the way that you get around something like hiding your ip is by having the isps track the people who are using vpns uh, because every vpn corresponds to a vpn's ip address and so if the ISP reports that activity to the government, then you can effectively outlaw that kind of technology. Hmm. I, 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 I do see what you mean, but I think that, well, first of all, two things. Um, one, I think it, it would only have to be the perpetrator of the abuse that, that can use these sort of technologies, like Tor and VPNs and this sort of stuff. It wouldn't have to be the victims. And also, I think that even even if that were true, and like, um, you know, maybe maybe those who are are smarter and are able to, you know, access these sort of technologies from a young age, they sure they may be smart in that respect, 
but they could still be susceptible to emotional manipulation and the like from these uh, predatory actors. Mm. And and I think that just saying that they should be smarter is not enough because it misses some of the nuance of the situation and like how these things actually happen. Mm. It's usually like, you know, playing on these people's heartstrings and, um, you know, pulling these long cons over them where they where they pretend to be their friend and you know uh, uh abuse their sense of isolation yeah these types of factors yeah i mean it seems like you definitely empathize with the people going through these problems more than i do and i think that's commendable because i mean it, it's sad these things that, that happen i think you know, it could easily be construed as kind of cold, the thing that I I had said, like, oh, just get good, bro, <laughs> it's kind of like, well, hold on, man. hold on, hold your horses there for a moment. Um, I, I definitely see, at least conceptually, like, merit in what you're saying, even though I don't, like, just intuitively, I, I it's hard for me to kind of connect the dots, because just, like, my feelings, like, on a gut instinct level, Mm-hmm. I look at this and I'm just like, this shit's dumb, bro. <laughs> like, are, are you really would get swindled by? I, I, you see some of these messages mm-hmm. that these guys send. Yeah, it's like the most obvious manipulation possible. It like, I, I don't. I knew that growing up. Yeah. I, it, I I think one thing we can both agree on is that. Better education is a must. Like people need to be taught again, like how to stay safe online. Which I mean, it's a lost, it's a lost art, but it needs to be, needs to be retaught because it's very, very important. You can have better education, but you also have a bunch of people who are simply not going to listen to the education. <laughs> Even back in the day, yeah, yeah. You know, back in the day, you had kids who were getting, you know on on neopets forms Mm -hmm. on neopets forms they were doing this in the early 2000s and so it's not uh outside of the realm of possibility that there's always going to be a certain percentage of the population that's just immune to these kinds of initiatives and the question that it comes down to for me is is it worth is it worth allowing for some freedoms if it means that some people are going to fall through the cracks Mm -hmm. and uh my position is no that those freedoms aren't necessary if it means that certain people will fall through the cracks Mm -hmm. the thing that i find interesting or compelling about what you're saying is that you seem to believe that they'll fall through the cracks anyway yeah i think there's always going to be people who fall through the cracks and, and it's impossible to fully seal it up without just saying um, well, it's not even like, it's, it's like, it's kind of like you would have to say to that kid, like, you shouldn't even go online, you mm-hmm. know, otherwise there's always a chance. There's a, it's not never a hundred percent chance that nobody's going to try and victimize you if you're, if you're not, in, unless you're literally not on the internet. Well, I mean, ideally none of them would be on the internet. Ideally you would have, uh, ID verification that would make it to where no one under 16 or maybe 17 could go online you mm. could even go online and so you would you would take all of them off the internet so that you know let's say that one of these abuser types hacked somebody's account mm-hmm. and they were using their account with that other person's id yeah you know let's just never mind the fact that uh that could be traced to whatever service that they're using to hide their ip Mm -hmm. you could at least trace it back that far and then the the other person could recover their account Mm -hmm. let's not pay attention to that let's just say that there's like no way possible for that other person to recover their account or to find out who did it right yeah um if there's no kids online Mm -hmm. it's not possible for them to even make the connection in the first place to interact with the person in the first place yeah i mean that's that's definitely true i i i guess my counter argument would be that it's valuable for a lot of people that are you know under 16 to use the internet um Mm -hmm. it's it's possible to gain a lot of value out of the internet and and that was definitely the case for me 
And I know that that's definitely the case for a lot of other people as well. Including me. I mean, I, I said that. <laughs> yeah, in the, you too. Like a lot of people that just lack a sense of community in their real life can find friends, can make connections, and can learn about the world that maybe the <laughs> maybe they've been overly sheltered from, or maybe they've been not allowed to um, connect with by their parents. And and this kind of gives them a chance to to. Um, at least have a little bit of escape from from their narrow and stuffy lives, which mm. was definitely the case for us. Yeah, you know, I'm. <laughs> it's so funny. I'm just thinking about how when you and I first started talking, the first time we ever talked, I was how old was I? Like sixteen. I was like this sixteen-year-old <laughs> YouTuber mm -hmm. yeah. that, that was defending you in a Discord server against <laughs> transphobia. That I, mm -hmm. I just happened to assume that you were transgender. Yeah. Based on your typing <laughs> style. And yeah, and it's like I wasn't even technically <sighs> identifying as transgender then, but it's like I just didn't correct you at all. I just went along with it. I'm like, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I. Uh... That, that, that was the origin story of how we started talking, by the way. Didn't talk for a while after that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we just, we just had like a brief exchange where we talked about, you know, the YouTube channel and just the, uh, just the server that we were met in. And then we just sort of, we just sort of went silent for the longest time until we reconnected just, just, uh, just two years ago now. Yeah. Just yeah. under two years ago. Yeah. And, you know, it's funny because... If I hadn't been making those YouTube videos and making all the connections that came from those YouTube videos, I wouldn't have met you. Mm -hmm. And yeah. and that's not to say anything of like all the different friends that I have uh, who ended up bailing me out when, you know, someone like my dad would do some really fucked up shit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, you know, so many things would be different, vastly different for the worst. Uh, and I think I would be a much different person, much less educated, because a lot of my time online was spent just learning things growing up. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's not like there aren't good outcomes that can come of this. It's, it's not like that's not the case. Um, but it's hard for me to stomach... You're making the most interesting <laughs> face at the camera. I was like trying to figure out what was going on with that. Um, <laughs> I'm just a little bit shy on camera, so I make silly faces. Mm -hmm. um, okay, babe. But <laughs> I uh, I've, now I've completely trailed <laughs> off what I was going to say. Oh, okay. I I, I remember now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um but yeah like uh the the thing that really gets me is the the thing that has sort of propelled me to this position is like yeah i can acknowledge that you and i you know had something really good come out of being online at that age yeah i can acknowledge mm -hmm. that that there are other people similar to us mm -hmm. but the idea that there would be people whose lives are irreparably changed by coming into contact with some of these abusive groups that exist, that some of these crazy people that are out there, uh, oh. th those kids are never going to be able to get their lives back. They're going to have trauma and mental illness for the rest of their life because of what was done to them. The pets that some of them are forced to kill in these, uh, you know, far right satanic groups, uh, those pets are never going to be alive again. They're never going to be brought back. And think of the the trauma for for the families that have to endure all of this. It's it's to me un unconscionable that behavior like this could continue to occur, and. For, for me, you know, just on my own, like, moral calculation, I guess you could call it. Kind of a nerdy way to put it. Uh, you have to do something. You have to do something. And, and I feel perfectly fine throwing out all the good if it means getting rid of all the bad with something like this. Mm -hmm. It's just like, 
I, I totally get your point because, like, yeah, this is really heavy and some really serious stuff. Mm. And, I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to argue against that. It's just, it's just so, so bad mm-hmm. what's going on and any way that we can hope to minimize or, or stop it. I think is worth looking into at the very least like something has to be done but mm-hmm. i just i just don't think that digital ids are the solution personally mm-hmm. yeah and i think there's you know i've sort of been arguing against you throughout this video but i do think that there's something to be said of increased education increased responsibility on the part of parents i think you know maybe something that you haven't really explored you know, to I'm trying to give credence to your perspective here, mm-hmm. is what if there were financial incentives to parents to monitor their kids' internet activity and to take initiative in policing um, their usage of the internet? I, like, literally just came up with this, but, like, let's say the parents were to voluntarily provide the government with some sort of evidence that they're monitoring what their kid does online, right? Mm -hmm. And if they can provide that, they just get cash. They just get money. Mm -hmm. I feel like that would incentivize, maybe not all of them, but a hell of a lot of parents to uh, take more initiative in seeing what the kids are doing. Yeah, sure. I mean, I think I think that most most parents would, to be honest, because I mean, who doesn't need a little bit of extra cash? Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that would definitely help. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I think this the scale of the payments could end up being unexpectedly high, to be honest. Just because I mean, I think if I think if you have that sort of benefit available, like just like a lot of people are going to claim it, you know. And that would be a good thing for sure for for the kids. Um, I think it's definitely a a good possibility. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, as you were saying that, I I was just thinking about like, well, you know what I believe about how wealth de- redistribution should work. Yes. Um, <laughs> I mean, me too. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's like it's like it's almost like if you had a sort of. UBI with like piecemeal like 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 uh you know do this for this much do this for this much like you're like you're getting like your swag bucks or something like that yeah I mean they already do like they already do tax credits in a number of countries for uh people who exercise so I think Mm -hmm. financial incentives are are one way that you could do this I think another way this is actually something that I, I felt uh, was good to ask you about was what do you think of the idea of having AI take a bigger role on these platforms? Well, let's say that, you know, for example, take Discord. Mm-hmm. You have a, a very expensive language model that scans through absolutely everything yeah. that's subsidized by the government. So the, the company is actually get money for implementing this Mm -hmm. because it would of course be a very expensive piece of technology um they get money for implementing this and it scans through everything in order to see if there is csam or uh, certain keywords Mm -hmm. and the moment that the model notices these things it's sent directly to the authorities yeah i i think that's a I think that's a really smart idea. I honestly don't even think it would be that expensive. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it could be implemented for like, you know, relatively like on the scale of these platforms, like relatively cheap. Um, and and I think it would do a lot of good, especially especially if it was monitoring like um, these younger accounts. But I mean, since a lot of people would put big ages, I don't think it would be, would be bad to just have it monitoring across the board and like sending these sending these reports and like maybe not instantly alert the authorities but have a have a middle ground that that will look through the cases that are being reported specifically mm-hmm. and then and then make be able to make those reports to the relevant authorities once once the information is gathered mm-hmm. yeah just just to avoid these like false positives and stuff like that that can sometimes come with these AI models yeah 
Yeah, so I, I think there's a number of ways, and there, there are other ones as well that I'm, I'm not even mentioning or that I haven't imagined yet, mm -hmm. that a system kind of, you could find a, a middle ground system from like what I'm talking about and what you were talking about, or just intelligent ways to implement what you were talking about. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't have to be this all-encompassing Chinese-style approach to the internet that I want. I mean, that is what I want, but uh, I think there are other ways to reduce the harm of what we're talking about mm -hmm. that don't involve that, that kind of uh, what some might refer to as state overreach. Yeah. 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 <laughs> True. Yeah. That's, that's about it, man. Okay. That was a YouTube video.